everybody and welcome back to the Chan Chan. In today's video we are taking a sneaky peeky first look here at two of my favorite figures from the Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian Wave 2 line of toys. And that is the 1 18th scale Paki Rhinosaurus which is my all-time favorite from the entire Ceratopsian line. And of course the other big boy, the big boy himself over here, the 1 18th scale Centrosaurus. I absolutely love 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 the sculpt and paint job on these guys. Isn't that right, Triceratops Muffin? <laughs> And I also wanted to announce the winner today of my Instagram Spinosaurus giveaway, and that winner is Long Hair Vegan. So congratulations, Long Hair Vegan. I've actually messaged you. Actually, I'm doing it right now as we speak. I'm messaging you. So congratulations. You got yourself a brand new Camp Cretaceous Spinosaurus. If you guys didn't already know, the owner of Creative Beast Studio, David Silva, was a designer and sculptor for McFarlane Toys. He worked at Hasbro and is now at NECA as a sculptor. And if you guys actually remember a few videos back, I did a review on the Alpha Predator from NECA, and I said it was my favorite NECA Predator figure so far. I absolutely love, love that figure. And um, it turns out David actually did um, the conceptual design, the sculpt, and the backstory for that figure. And I was like, the Beasts of the Mesozoic line is divided up by series that focus on specific dinosaurs. So the first series kicked off on Kickstarter in 2016, and that was the Raptor series. This latest series is the Ceratopsians, which we are already into wave two of that line. And we also have some Tyrannosaurus to look forward to in the Feucha for a third series. So the wave two Ceratopsians are available for pre-order, and it looks like their estimated release for delivery is in April. And I, of course, will leave links to Creative Beast Studio in the description below. So a giant thank you to David for sending over these big bad boys over for me to review with you. I'm really excited to take a look at them. And also David sent over a little surprise, little surprise present. So if you guys want to see what's in here, stick around till the end of the review and we'll take a look, see at what's in there. The base packaging for each figure is essentially the same, save for this figure specific sleeve. And we have that checklist on the back for the wave two Ceratopsians. And there's our two big boys there on the bottom. And we also have a little bio on our figure here. Packy Rhinosaurus means thick-nosed lizard, the oldest of the three identified species of Pachyrhinosaurus, P. lacustae, is distinctive among its boss-nosed brethren for the long horn in the center of its frill. P. lacustae was discovered by Al lacusta as part of a massive bone bed in Pipestone Creek, Alberta. Taking this guy out of the box, we have a lovely profile art card featuring our dino, and on the other side is a picture of the actual figure itself, with again some facts and stats. We have a background with what the environment might have looked like for our dino as well. We have some instructions and it says to dip the tail hole in hot water or heat with a hair dryer for 20 seconds, then attach the tail into the ball joint on the figure. So I'm gonna dip this thing in some hot water. Oh my gosh, this looks incredible. So this figure measures approximately 15 inches long and about seven and a half inches high with 20 points of articulation. And the color inspiration for this guy was the red iguana because these guys are usually based on the real life color schemes of amphibians and reptiles in the wild. I just love this color scheme so much. It reminds me of like a hot, warm cup of cocoa, you know, this kind of warm reddish brown color and the contrast that it has with this kind of minty green blue color. It's just so pleasing. I love it so much. Oh, I just wanna eat this. So let's take a look at the head first, this absolutely incredible sculpt. You can't deny that this is a gorgeous, gorgeous head sculpt. It looks so realistic. That mosaic of scales, the splashes of color and highlights, you know, the yellows and the blues, it really draws your eyes in. Here's that nose boss where a horn usually is on a Ceratopsian, really nice detail on that. And even those little extra bumps leading down to the beak. And we have a nostril here and a nostril on the other side as well. The jaw is articulated and let's take a peek inside that sucker. You can see some tongue action in there and it is articulated so you can give it a little move around. And for such a small little hidden space, there's actually a lot of detail in there and you can actually see teeth inside there too. And with these wave two figures, it looks like we can actually close our mouth all the way. Whereas with the wave one guys, we couldn't actually completely close the jaw up. And let's head over to that eye region that looks 
looks incredibly realistic. It, it doesn't look cartoony or anything like that. There's that horn feature in the middle of the skull and at the top of the frill, we have that neat horn pattern with two long horns kind of curved out. Okay, so down the neck we go to new adventures untold. Lots of fun details on this guy to look at. There's a few of these larger scales painted solid black to really break up that color around the areas. And um, we have these black stripes going down the full length of the figure, which are definitely inspired by that red iguana color pattern. And there's also this fun pattern here on the side. I really like that, how the mint color just kind of creeps up. Um, I did notice some of these seams and kind of these obviously kind of production marks and such here on the sides, a little bit on the sides, and even a little one here on the belly, but it's it's really not enough to, you know, be apparent and be like, oh, look at all these seams and stuff. Like you can kind of barely notice them really. Oh my God, look at those little feeties. These little feeties are so cute. And we also have nice painted toenails too, these black toenails. Certainly spared no expense on the feeties. And here's that front region with all the folds. It kind of reminds me of like a bulldog, you know, when they're walking and they have all that folding in the front here or like a bodybuilder guy and he's like, Arr! so let's see what this baby can do articulation wise. Are you ready? Are you ready Peloton? Are you ready? I believe you, you can do this. We're gonna start at the head and work our way down to the tail. Stay with me Peloton, you got it. We have that jaw that can go up and down and inside the tongue is actually articulated too. So you can kind of move that around if you want. We have articulation in the neck in two places, one up here and one down there. Have that giant torso segment that can twist. So on the front shoulder area here, we have 360 degree spin as well as we can go up and down. On the elbow, we can go 360 as well. And again, up and down. And on the wrist, we can go 360 degree spin. Then on the back, on the thigh, we have 360 degree spin. Uh, got 360 on the knee area here as well. And I think we can also kind of um, bend that knee a tiny bit too, if I'm not mistaken, maybe mine's just tight. And then we have two areas of articulation on the bottom here in the ankle area. We have 360 degree spin, as well as some up and down motion and that wrist and down whatever you want and spin all the way around. And of course we have that tail there at the back and it's nice because it's not loose by any means. Wherever you put it, it's gonna stay. It's nice and tight. Lots of options articulation wise for this guy, which makes these figures ideal for photography and even, you know, for things like stop motion. So you can really find some really fun and cool poses for your shelf to display this guy for sure. I did review some wave one figures a while ago, the Styracosaurus and the Zuni Ceratops. And um, after re reviewing these guys, I only had like two critiques. It was just that their tongues, I wish they were kind of more, um, kind of more pronounced in there and they're maybe kind of arched like they're vocalizing like bah, bah, kind of thing um and also i wasn't a big fan of that segment that was here like if you're gonna have that segment it'd be nice if it can kind of you know go up and down this way as well and side to side not just twist um so i do kind of have the same critiques with this guy not so much the tongue because this guy actually does have lots of tongue way more than these guys did um and the other thing was just that articulation segment here like if you're gonna have that big segment you know it'd be nice if it could actually go up and down a little bit so it can kind of maybe you know sandwich this way or it can kind of arch its back a little bit more but very impressive color pattern and painting on this guy for sure i love his sculpt so much and he's also very heavy so i do have a little scale here so let's see what this Let's see uh, how much this guy is. 1.917 pounds. That's basically, that's like two pounds. That's insane. So you know when you're working out, you can basically get one of these guys and be like, yes, yes. Finally, let's take a look at that Centrosaurus. Oh, sorry. I mean, Centrosaurus apertus, apertus. Who knows how to pronounce it? I don't. This guy was from the late Cretaceous period and also found in my neighboring province of Alberta. Centrosaurus was a herd animal, as is evidenced by the vast bone beds that have been found. Because of this, it is one of the most researched dinosaurs and is also one of the few Ceratopsian species with fossilized skin impressions. This guy is approximately 16 inches long and about seven inches high with 20 points of articulation. So he's about an inch longer than the Pachyrhinosaurus we just reviewed. And the color inspiration for this guy was a blue crested lizard. And let's see who the heavier boy was. I have a feeling that Pachyrhinosaurus was actually the heaviest because he kind of feels the heaviest. 
Um, he was 1.917 pounds, I believe. 1.867 pounds. So the Pachyrhinosaurus is actually heavier than this guy. This guy's longer by an inch, but I think this guy's a little bit higher and he's definitely feels more dense. So if you guys are doing an exercise and it requires two two pound weights, you know exactly where to get your weights from. Just grab a pair of these guys. So many different colors on this guy. We have blues, greens, brown, and creams. We have that curved horn out here that is the same color as the beak and the other ornaments around the head to really make them pop out from that green color. The beak has some really nice coloring detail here and there's that tongue right there that we can also move around. Really fun white stripe patterns here on the sides of the face that are bordered as well as on the frill area here. There's always such nice details and color patterns on these frills. And there's those two saggy horns there with some dry brushing to really bring out some of those deets some of those details. And the eye really pops on this guy, but I definitely prefer the eye on the Packy Rhino. That one just looks so realistic in comparison to this one. So moving down, we have that nice thick white stripe on either side, going basically all the way down to the end of the tail. Again, we have some shading and highlights to really help define those muscles and break up the colors. And nice painted toenails down here. Those are fantastic. Those look really nice um, with the little brown tips there. Nice color down there to really bring out those belly scales. And of course we have those cute little feeties there on the bottom. Same articulation points as our other figure, the jaw, the tongue. We got the two areas here on the neck, the front shoulder, the elbow, wrist, the middle segment, back hips, knee, two in that ankle region, and of course the tail. So again, a really impressive figure, absolutely beautiful sculpt and paint job on these things. And this one in particular really does look like a watercolor painting. So let's do a little size comparison of these guys. Here they are next to a coffee cup and some Lysol. Come on, everyone's got Lysol in their house and the size of this bottle like doesn't change. So it's a perfect thing to use as a size comparison. And here's a few other of the Wave 1 Ceratopsians. And here is my muffin. Big, big thank you to David Silva for sending these big boys over for me to review with you all. These were absolutely incredible and very, very high end and quality figures for sure. And David also sent over a little surprise that I haven't opened yet. So it says here, glow in the dark Zuni Ceratops. Test shot, one of three. So in wave one, we had this Zuni Ceratops. And then in wave two, they have the glow in the dark Zuni Ceratops. And I guess this was maybe like for some promotional shots or some tests or something. Love how you can actually see like all the little parts on the inside as well, like all the little joints and ball joints and such. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me from Spyro the Dragon uh, on PlayStation. And there was all these uh, dragons that were like uh, encapsulated in these statues and you had to walk up to the statue to like activate it and release the dragon. This is like exactly the same color. This is so cool. So this guy glows in the dark. So let me just a little Pixie here. That's so cool. How cool is it to, you know, have like an actual piece of the Beast of the Mesozoic line, you know, like part of the pre-production and the promos and such. So that's really special. Thank you very much. So in the comments down below, I'd love to know which figure you guys like the most that we reviewed today. Was it the Pachy Rhinosaurus or was it the Centrosaurus? Do you have any figures from the Beast of the Mesozoic line? Do you plan on ordering some or pre-ordering some? And are you excited for that Tyrannosaurus line? Because I certainly am. So please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I come up with new videos every week. Come check me out on social media and help support the channel on Patreon. So thank you all so much for watching and stay legendary.